Yo, what is up guys? Welcome to another Wild Rift video. And in today's video, I'll be playing what might be one of the most underrated ADCs in the game right now, which is Jinx. So I love Jinx, and I currently have a 63% win rate on Jinx, which is pretty good, you know? So, um, wait, let me show you this real quick. So I changed my build up. Like my last Jinx video has been like a few months ago. It's crazy. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you guys a new build and new tips on Jinx. Like a lot has changed, really, like a lot, a lot, a lot has changed. So there's timestamps in the description if you want to skip out the build part. I don't recommend it this time though, because I do have a lot of new things to teach to you. So, <clears throat> how do you build Jinx? Um, there's basically two builds that you can go for on Jinx. First one is the crit build, and then the second one is the Blade of the Rune King build. The crit build is better. So, you know, you can start off with a Blade of the Rune King, and while it is better against tanks, you know, while you will chunk down tanks faster, it's just not worth it. The thing is, let me tell you what the thing is. The crit build in the late game chunks down tanks too. You're only gonna be struggling in the mid game if you don't have a Blade of the Rune King against tanks. Against squishes, you wanna go for this build. The main reason, so the main, main reason that I'm telling you guys that you wanna go for this build, and I quickly wanna show you guys Jinx's uh, first ability with that. So the main reason that you wanna use that build is because the rockets deal more damage. And that damage gets becomes even more with crit. So take a look at this. Um, so with the rocket launcher, attacks cost mana, but you gain bonus range and explode to deal 110% damage to the target and enemies around it. So that's 10% more damage, right? But with crit, you're going to be dealing 200% damage, right? That's how crit works. So 200% damage. So you're going to be utilizing that 10% twice. And Infinity Edge gives you 30% damage on top of that. Amplify that as well with the 10% bonus damage. And that is how you get those insane rockets on Jinx. And that's what we're going to be talking about today, the rockets, guys. Because I changed my playstyle to be revolved more around the rockets. And oh my god. Like literally winning every single game on Jinx. And it, it's crazy. It's crazy. So you start with the Infinity Edge. Second item, Rune on Zurichane. Rune on Zurichane is going to fire three rockets. Imagine. You, you're literally going to fire three rockets at the cost of only one rocket, the mana cost. So always Rune on Zurichane, second item. The boots... Almost always Glutinous Griefs. You want to have as much Vampirism as you can with Jinx. Because she deals insane damage. So the more Vampirism you have, the more you heal. And if you have a lot of Vampirism, you're literally going to be healing up to full HP every single time. It's crazy. So yeah, you make sure you get the Glutinous Griefs. For your enchantment, I really love uh, Quicksilver Enchant. And the main reason that, especially on Jinx, Quicksilver Enchant is good, is because you don't want to be going for Mercury Strats on Jinx. As I said, you really want to be going for the Glutinous Griefs. I mean, of course, if you have to, if the enemy really has a lot of CC, you're going to get the Mercury Strats, of course. But as I said, try to go for the Glutinous Griefs whenever you can. And if the enemy has any CC that's annoying, boom, you go for the Quicksilver Enchant and you avoid that CC. Uh, Protobelt is good on Jinx too, if the enemy doesn't have a lot of CC, but as I said, QSS is what you're generally going to be needing. Third item, I fell in love with Bloodthirster. So I used to go for a, a Rapid Fire Cannon, but you don't need it. Bloodthirster is going to give you that 50 attack damage, just the insane damage. At this point, you have so much attack damage already. You have the Runan's Hurricane, which spreads out your rockets, and you have like a lot of vampirism. You'll almost have 30% vampirism as well. So after three items, the only thing that you're going to struggle against, there is only one thing you'll struggle against, tanks. It's the only thing. You're only going to be struggling against tanks with this build, but you're going to absolutely demolish the squishies. So you kind of want to focus their squishies with this build. But as I said, you know, I'm not going to tell you this is the perfect build. The only weakness is tanks. But that's why you get a Mortal Reminder as your first, fourth item. By the way, if you're really struggling against tanks, what you can do is um, um, you can actually get a Last Whisper after these two items. Get a Last Whisper, and then if you really think you need it, you can even finish off the Mortal Reminder. But Last Whisper already gives you the 10% armor penetration. It's going to do pretty good against tanks. Um, so yeah, fourth item, Rapid Fire Cannon. You know, I... I, I my love kind of faded for Rapid Fire Cannon on Jinx because you don't really need it in the early mid game. But in the late game, like your rockets in the late game do so much damage that oh, like even one shot is going to chunk the enemy down from like 100% to like 60%. The squishies. So with the Rapid Fire Cannon in the late game, 
you can just quickly utilize that quick little boom, you know, the quick little rocket on the enemy to chunk them down before the fight even starts. You can go for Phantom Dancer if the enemy has a lot of assassins. This one is going to give you a lot of HP and stuff like that. You can even go for a Death Dance if you're a real chat. If the enemy doesn't have any anti-healing, but that's not going to happen in higher elo. Like if you're a low elo player and you see that the enemy doesn't have any anti-healing, you can even go for the Death Dance. You're literally going to become unkillable then. But I don't really recommend it because very likely they are going to have anti-healing. Moth more Marshes against a lot of magic damage. Actually, no. Withs Ant, I have tried Withs Ant on Jinx, and while it's not as amazing as on other champions, it's actually, I take back what I said about the Mothmore Morses, because Withs Ant is actually better against magic, resist champ, uh, magic damage champions. If you're against a lot of magic damage, get the Withs Ant on Jinx, you know, as your third item, fourth item, something like that. It's gonna help you a lot, because it gives you a lot of magic resist, and it heals you up as well, so... <laughs> it gives you everything you need and for the runes you always go conqueror without the conqueror you're gonna have zero damage literally second rune always hunter vampirism as i said vampirism 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 jinx is all about that vampirism third rune adaptive carapace for the early game you know um, um jinx kind of struggles in the early game kinda not really, but because she shoots with rockets. But if the enemy decides to all in you, you can surprise them with your tankiness with the adaptive carapace in the early game. Um, fourth rune, not sweet tooth. I used to go for sweet tooth, but I actually gave mana flow band a try. And this is what I talked about, like the different play style with Jinx that I that I'm gonna show you guys today. With the mana flow band, you can spam your rockets. You're literally never gonna run out of mana. It's insane. So this makes it worth losing out on the gold and sustain on the sweet tooth because you can spam your rockets you'll like you'll never run out of mana i mean of course you will but not as fast for your spells you go for barrier because you already have enough damage and for flash so enough about the build let's now get into the gameplay <clears throat> all right on to the gameplay and i had so many jinx games where i absolutely stomped the enemy okay but these are not the types of videos that I want to upload because, you know, of course, you know, if you stomp the enemy, thank you very much for watching, blah, blah, blah. I went 17 on zero. Look at how good I am. No, no, <laughs> I'm not about that. I'm more about giving you guys entertaining games. Let's take a look at this already. So look, boom. Let's take a look at what I just did right here. And this is a lesson that I teach a lot of my Patreon, support, uh, Patreon supporters as well who got coaching from me. Which is, do not take an ability upgrade up until you need it. You know, you, you normally you always take your first ability first on Jinx, right? Normally, because that's better. You know, you get the rockets and the bonus attack speed. But not in that situation. We have a Blitzcrank. Me and the Blitzcrank are moving up to hook someone. I took my second ability. First of all, second ability deals more burst damage. Secondly, second ability slows the enemy. So we were able to force the flash of kill because of that. You see what I'm saying? So as a Jinx, as I said, generally you're going to be taking your first ability first. But don't do it up until you need it. Don't do it. Maybe you'll catch out an enemy and then you can take your second ability and you'll slow them. And they cannot escape unless they flash away. So that's already the first small lesson that I have for you guys. Um, um, we're against a kill, by the way. Which is, you know, kill is really strong in the late game. But Jinx, you know... Jinx is also strong in the late game, and Jinx has more range than kill. But yeah, kill is still a problem, so don't really want to be heading up against the kill in the late game. But let's take a look at how we lane. And I, I chose this game especially. I'm not going to spoil, but I chose this game for a reason. That's all I'm going to say, and you guys are going to want to see that reason. Oh, what a beautiful hook by the Blitzcrank. Um, a drafting tip that I have for you guys. Oh, that was amazing. Boom. I, don't, I can't save here. Yeah, unfortunately, I got killed. This is totally worth it. You know why this is worth First of all, I got a kill. Enemy ADC did not get a kill. That's why I flashed on top of the Kai'Sa. I traded my death uh, for uh, for the enemy Alistar. You know, the Alistar killed me. But who cares about Alistar getting gold if I am getting gold? Look, I have 2,000 gold. Kai'Sa has 1,300 gold. Even though Alistar has a decent amount of gold, it doesn't really matter. As long as you get ahead. Because gold on the Dragon Laner is more important than gold on the support. So keep that in mind. Keys is going again. We can't really do much here. I don't have that much damage because the reason that you can never trade like this is because there was minions around me. If I would trade with Kai'Sa there, all of their minions would hit me. So you will get out traded in the early game by minions. Don't underestimate the power of minions, guys. You will get destroyed, actually. Not even out traded. 
Um, what was I talking about? I had something to say. Oh yeah, I'm also doing a 15 skin giveaway. Put a comment under this video to enter. You know, uh, I'm doing this every month again. All you have to, yeah, all you have to do is put down a comment under the video. Let's take a look at this. You know, Keys is helping me, but as you can see, I'm not really doing a lot of damage to the Alistar because he's a tank. <clears throat> so, you know, especially with that Aftershock as well, you're going to struggle a bit to kill an Alistar like that, especially with my build, because Blade Room King allows you to chunk it down. Oh, yeah, yep. I overextended. Jinx doesn't have any escape ability. Nothing. I mean, the only thing that you get could count as escape ability is your third ability. You know, you can put your third ability in front of you and walk through it. And if the enemy walks through your third ability, of course, they'll get rooted for one and a half seconds. But it's not really a dash or anything like that, right? So if you get caught like I did right there, you die. It's simple. You literally die. That is the problem of Jinx. And um, the reason that you build a lot of vampirism is because as a Jinx, positioning is key. As I said, it doesn't matter how much vampirism you have. If you get caught, you die. Simple. But if you do not get caught, and if the enemy only pokes you, and if the enemy only hits some abilities on you, you are not going to die. That's how Jinx works, guys. And position correctly, and in this game you'll see, position correctly, keep hitting the, en hitting the enemies with your rockets, and destroy them. You're going to heal up all the, H all the HP that you're missing, and that's it. Um, so another thing, rockets, as I said. Use your like in the late game, you're basically only gonna be using rockets for wave clear, for taking jungles, for attacking the enemies. Because as I said, you're gonna have an, a load of mana because of mana flow band. In the early game, however, you still want to use the fast attacks. Let's take a look at this. I have a rocket, but she's he's, uh, she's not quite at low enough HP. Oh god, oof, he's still dealing a lot of damage. So in the early game, you know, you still want to farm with your for, uh, with your fast attacks. By the way, a quick little tip. When you're pushing minion waves, even in the early game, if minions are close to each other and you want to push the minion wave fast, use the rocket because the rocket deals AoE damage. And it deals AoE damage 100%, you know? Like if you hit enemies uh, around, around the enemy that you're hitting with your rocket, it deals 100% damage. It's not reduced or anything. So that's the whole power of the rocket. So if there is a whole wave clumped up to each other, uh, if there's a whole wave clumped up to each other, use your rockets to clear it out. Like, look, I, 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 in this situation, I'm just desperately trying to focus the Kai'Sa, but this is not the power of Jinx, as you can see. Just doesn't really do anything right now. Jinx sucks early game. Like, sucks, sucks. You can only poke the enemy with your rockets, but in those all-ins, she really sucks. Um, oh, let's talk about the passive of Jinx. The passive... That you get when either killing an enemy or assisting a kill on the enemy or when taking turrets. You get bonus attack speed and bonus movement speed. Oh, and oh god, this becomes strong in the late game. In the late game, it's pretty easy to get at least one kill in a team fight with Jinx. Because you have so much range with your rockets and so much damage. So as a Jinx, you can actually put yourself in a very bad position just to get one kill. Here I'm dead again. Look, I I I screwed up my positioning. I'm just dead. Simple. Um, but yeah, if you get that one kill on the enemy in the late game, even if you're positioned very badly, like even if you're positioned super close to the enemy so they can catch you out, the bonus movement speed is gonna allow you to reposition yourself, and the bonus attack speed is gonna allow you to heal back up because you're gonna do so much damage that you're gonna heal back up. So that you know, as a jinx, you need to. Find your limits. Find your limits, because oh, he body blocked it. Find your limits, because the limits are are in the in the sky. You know, the limits are literally in the sky with Jinx. If you position correctly and if you know when to play aggressively, you can just you can just destroy the enemy. That's how I stomped most of my Jinx games. Like as I said, most of my Jinx games, 12-0, 15 minute win. You know, 17 on one stuff like that, and. It's, it's crazy, you know, it's crazy how hard I destroyed the enemies on Jinx. But as I said, in this game, it didn't happen. And that's why I want to show you guys this game. Oh, look at me and Excalibur right here, by the way. Completely ignoring the Alistar. Completely ignoring her, uh, his, him. And just went on the Kai'Sa. Look at this, look at this. I'm dealing zero damage. Again, I'm ignoring the Alistar going on the Kai'Sa. This is what you do. This is what you do on Jinx. Look, I'm only going on the kill. Look at that. Like, it's so funny how Alistar is in the front line, but I'm just... 
I'm literally shooting right through the Alistar. I'm shooting on all of the enemies behind the Alistar. Ugh, come on! Ah, I would have killed both of them. One more shot. One more, just one shot. Oh, okay, that is tilting. See, like, this is what can happen. This, this is what I mean. If I had killed the Lee Sin here, the story would have been different. This would have become a snowball game. Because if I killed the Lee Sin, I would have also killed the Alistar. And I would have had three kills and three deaths. I would have already had, like, a thousand gold. Another item right now. And I would have probably snowballed the game. Unfortunately, that's not the case. And as I said, you know, in some games, you're just not as lucky as others, right? So this happens. Don't get tilted. It happens, right? We're even getting trash talked by the cannon, but who cares, right? Who cares? You just do your thing. Look at this. Look, 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 look. This is the rocket. I already got Kaisa to 40% HP. Then I screwed up my positioning and I got killed. As I said, there is a reason that I'm showing you guys this video. As a jinx, it doesn't matter how much damage you deal. If you get caught like that, you're dead. And the Alistar actually did an absolutely amazing job waiting in the bush, baiting me because, like, Alistar didn't immediately go on me because my positioning was good in the beginning. Then I was overstepping to hit another rocket, right? I was overstepping a lot. And that's what ultimately killed me because uh, 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 Alistar was waiting and then Alistar caught me in the bad position. He killed me then and now I'm 1 5. He's giving the Kaisa a lot of gold. So their Alistar is doing an amazing job, you know? It's. That was just truly amazing, uh, capitalizing on my positioning mistake. Right now, Keys actually killed the Kaiser. So what can I do? Use the rocket to push the lane. Look, look. Rockets push the lane faster. Uh, and I switch back to the fast shooter because the minions are too far away from each other. But when the minions are clumped up, you use your rocket. And now I have to go back. Get the rune on Zuricane. Before the next dragon fight, I'll have the rune on Zuricane, which is an insane power spike, by the way. This is really, really big in team fights. Because if there's three enemies close to you, you hit all three of them with rockets. And the beauty is, all three of those rockets are going to explode. So all three rockets are going to deal the insane damage. I mean, of course, the other two rockets are only going to deal 40% of the damage. But still, it's a lot of damage. Taking the red buff already. Because as I said, like when Jinx gets a rune on Zuricane, as a jungler, you should always give her the red buff. Because she's going to be able to apply the red buff to three enemies instead of one. So three times more valuable, basically. So... Keep that in mind. By the way, guys, if you're enjoying the video, make sure you give it a like. It helps the channel a lot, and it's a simple like button. So if you want to, give it a like. If you don't want to, don't give it a like. Just enjoy the video. <clears throat> so yeah, constantly, by the way, constantly paying attention to what's happening on the other side of the map. Very important. I can see four, four enemies on top, one enemy in mid. Oh, that was a good rocket, though. What am I doing? I'm ignoring it completely and taking a turret. The reason that I'm playing like this is because we're behind. And when you're behind as a Jinx, you need to get back, right? You need to get back. Now, how do you get back as a Jinx? Exactly what I'm doing right now. Take turrets and take jungle. Look, I'm taking turrets and I'm taking jungle. Jinx is pretty fast at taking jungle. You know, with your attack speed, uh, with your attack speed, you'll take jungle really fast. Look, I'm literally taking everything. I'm taking everything. And I was at zero gold a minute ago. Now I'm at 2000 gold. And if he catches her, oh, that's close. If he caught her, I would have killed her as well and got him back even further. But look, you know, I'm just farming. Literally just farming. And I'm currently at 2,400 gold, which is big. And now I'm dead. Yet again, the reason that I died is positioning. I did not pay attention to where the enemy was. I did not really look at the map and see where they were. And I died. It is okay, however, because I was able to get a load of gold right there. You know, I pushed that turret, I cleared their entire jungle, but I got caught. So, you know, I'm still, uh, it's not good. It's not good that I got caught. I should have just gone back immediately. I should have checked the minimap, seen where the enemies were and gone back after they were all missing. So, yeah, I'm 1-6 right now, but I'm pretty sure I'm, I'm not, like, yeah, I'm not behind in gold. I'm not behind in gold. Because of the way that I've played this game. Kaisa only has 500 more gold than me. Only 500. What the hell is this? <laughs> so only 500 more gold than me. And the simple reason that she only has 500 more gold than me. Even though she has more kills and their team is super ahead. It's because I'm constantly farming. Constantly farming minions. Look, farming this wave as well. And after I farm this wave, or basically already, I'm looking for the next thing to farm. I'm already trying to look for the next thing to farm. 
there is nothing to farm however because the whole jungle is cleared all of the waves are pushed so yeah I, i'm, I'm kind of screwed here but it's okay i'm gonna take the red buff you know i almost have my bloodthirster oh there's a kill slowing look you can slow with that second ability it's really really good That was a clean kill. That was a clean kill. And now I got my bloodthirster, guys. Slowly but steadily. Look at, like, just, just, if you keep track at how fast I'm generating gold in this game right now, it's actually absurd. I basically, I basically generated 4,000 gold in, like, four minutes. No, in, like, three minutes. Sorry, in, like, three minutes. Even faster. It's insane. Look, there we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. I got the reset. There we go. Another reset. There we go. Oh, I cannot catch the Janna because Janna is super fast. But there we go. That's another kill for me. When you get the reset, you're going to clean up. You're basically clean up screw. What am I doing? Invading their blue buff. Look, simple. It's super simple. I'm invading their blue buff, clearing their entire jungle yet again. You know, taking this, taking the bit fat, big fat brown guy, may, uh, I'm probably going to go immediately to the dragon, then I'm going to push out the bot lane, and I'll have another 2000 gold. See what I'm saying? I'm just constantly hyper farming myself. Oh, there's a kill. It's a bit dangerous. Look at how much damage he's dealing. I don't know why the jacks went on the kill. We could have just bursted down the dragon. Now it's a bit risky though. Yeah, it's a bit risky. Mm, like now we kind of screwed up he, like look at how fast we can burst it down he should have done it earlier we still got it but it was really risky look 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 going on their back line look going on the back line oh look i threw my root on the teleport unfortunately lee sin immediately used the second ability so he went out of my root but my damage is just through the roof right now i'm level 14 i'm two levels ahead of the kaisa in a losing game imagine the whole as, again i'm gonna repeat because this is the this, this is the whole important thing about jinx the whole reason that i'm two levels ahead of the kaisa even though this is a losing game because i was farming i was looking for any gold and experience that i could get on the map you know whatever it was jungle champion kills uh, minions turrets whatever i kind of sacrificed my team for it you know you remember earlier on in the game where my team was getting destroyed on the top side of the map i wasn't i was farming and here we go again, farming, taking everything. I'm going to take these ones as well, and then I'm going to push the wave as well. And look, mortal reminder. That's already my fourth item. Do you guys remember five minutes ago that I was at two items? Well, no, five minutes later, we're at four items. This fast. And now, now we've entered late game jinx. Now we've entered the late game jinx that you want to enter. After your fourth item, like... Like this is this is where you absolutely destroy the enemy and i think in, in, in this game i might go for the phantom dancer and the reason is kill probably because kill will absolutely destroy us if kill reaches levels level uh, 15. yet again not fighting taking jungle by the way the blue buff is oh 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 oh, oh, oh. positioning 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 careful this is not good this is Ah, the reason that I was positioning like this because i already had my third ability thrown on the ground like i had my third ability here so they would get rooted if they engaged on me, but Lee Sin could have still engaged on me. But I actually would have been able to 1 versus 1 the Lee Sin, so the thought process was okay there. And I had a flash, so if they all end me with their flash, I would have just flashed away, so it was okay. And as I said, the blue buff is also insanely good on Jigs. Basically with the blue buff, you can completely spam your rockets for everything. Like look, I'm initiating the fight with a rocket. Boom, boom, and boom. She's that boom, 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 ah... I hit the Kai'Sa in the backline right there. I gotta be very careful of the kill, but I used my barrier to outdamage the kill. Nice. There it is. I'm pushing out the lane again. You know, I'm probably gonna clear their jungle again. Let's take a look. Yeah, exactly. Look at just look at how disgusting I'm playing my jinx. Look, I'm not giving the enemies any like on top of the fact that I'm getting so much gold, enemies is not enemy is not able to farm his jungle. Because I've cleared the blue side jungle three times already now. Three times in this game. Look, pushing the lane, you know, just doing what Jinx can do. And yet again, we're almost at 3,000 gold. I can get my next item. Look, Phantom Dancer. Again, in one and a half minute, I was able to get yet another item. 
17 minute game and I'm already full build. As a jinx. <laughs> How incredible. I'm full build and I'm level 15, guys. Just so let's take a look. I was here trying to decide what to go for. I believe. Oh, mm, I could have gone for a Wits Ant in this game actually. Because their kill will destroy us very likely. So maybe I should have gone for a Wits Ant actually. Hmm. Phantom Dancer is fine though, you know, Phantom Dancer is also going to save me against the kill, but Wiz Ant would have perhaps been a little better. Ah, the thing is though, uh, 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 Phantom Dancer is going to give me crit as well. So right now I have 100% crit chance. So uh, yeah, I'm going to destroy the enemy. And the reason that I'm not taking any other farm right now from my own jungle is because I am full build. I don't have to take farm anymore. So the only reason for me to, to take farm is to either steal it from the enemy or to push out waves. We shouldn't do the Elder here, we should only bait them and fight. Because level 15 Jinx with 5 items is pretty much a guaranteed win. Okil is still level 14 by the way, so we should really really fight right now. Because we don't want Kill to be level 15. I, th I believe Kill is going to be level 15 though, so that's why we're baiting the enemy right now. We can just bait them with the Elder Dragon to force them to fight. We're forcing them to fight. Oh, there is a Lee Sin. I'm literally going to flash over the wall and just go for the Lee Sin. Why? Because Lee Sin can steal the dragon and he cannot kill me. So look, my job right now is to go on the Lee Sin 100%. I don't want to go on the Alistar. Look, I'm going on the Kai'Sa. Boom, boom. Kai'Sa killed. Kill used, his, uh, used her ultimate. Kill was dead. They actually stole the Elder Dragon, by the way. But it's okay. This is what I mean. Um, in a moment like this, you have to use the Elder Dragon as a bait. Because if you don't, Kill is going to get level 15 and you can lose the game. You just have to. You have to go for it fast and we won the game. Did you see that? Like, this was quite literally the perfect example of how to make a comeback on Jinx. Because, you know, you can stomp on Jinx and everything like that. But I got a lot of people ask me, like, man, if I get behind on Jinx, uh, I don't know how to make a comeback because I deal zero damage. It's true. You will deal zero damage. But that's why you have to play Jinx exactly like me. So, thank you very much for watching. And I really hope you guys enjoyed this Jinx video, and I will see you all in the next Wild Drift video. Bye-bye.